Hi, my name is Alex Hester, and this is my area of factory. Hmm, looks like the storm has taken out the power to the factory. If I want the TBL, I'll have to fix the solar panels and connect the power to the door. The first solar panel is real easy for the player to see, so they can get an idea for what they're looking for. The second panel can be found behind these boxes the and behind disgusting. a shipping container. Huh. Wouldn't want to swim in that. The voice line acts as a warning to the player that the water will cause damage continuously to them if they touch it. On the roof, by standing next to one of the empty pedestals and pressing E, the player can replace the solar panels. The last one is on top of this box, which the player needs the smaller box to jump on. After all the solar panels are in place, the green light on the plug indicates that there's power to the input. By placing the connector there, the player can open the door. More cables. I'll need two to open the safe. There must be extra cables around here somewhere. But none of the cables I've seen so far look like they'll fit in place to power the warehouse door. The first cable can be found in the open office. With that, the player can open the second office and find the second cable. Great! There's another one. I'll need to unplug the one I used to open this door and reuse it to power the safe. By using both connectors, the player can open the safe and find the special connector needed to open the warehouse door and the TBL blueprint. With the door open, the player must crawl underneath the shipping container that's fallen in the way. Once inside, the player must send power to the Gravnel crane and ride it into the refinery. Huh. It looks like a Gravnel device on the ceiling. I wonder if I can turn it on. By standing next to the button and pressing E, the player can activate the crane and ride it in. Inside the refinery, the player must find four metal ingots and place them into the furnace, then power the furnace, and then send the molten metal up to the assembly line. The first ingot can be found on a steel beam along the wall. The next two must be reached by using the other steel beams that are physics objects as bridges and ramps. The special connector will be needed to send power to the crane that carries the metal up to the assembly line. The last ingot is underneath these boxes, underneath the button that sends the crane back into the warehouse. By standing next to the furnace and pressing E, the player can place the ingots inside. Come on baby, light my fire. <coughs> oh, I better stick with my day job. Now that the player has melted the metal, they must send power to the crane using the special connector.
Now the player must take the straight connector that came from the lights and use it to open the second door to the warehouse. Then the player must cross to the other side of the warehouse and use the stairs to reach the assembly line. Now I gotta find something to put in here so I can get across. A section of the stairs has fallen out. The player must use the steel beam as a bridge in order to get up. The rest of the gaps can be jumped across. Inside the assembly line, the player must find three missing casts and place them out on the conveyor belt to make the TBL. The first cast can be found behind some boxes behind the assembly. The straight connector is required to send power to the assembly unit. The player can either use the connector behind the assembly unit or reuse the connector from the lights. This special connector is needed to send power to the crane that the player will ride out of the scene. The last cast can be found in the far corner. By standing next to the conveyor belt and pressing E, the player can place them on the conveyor. Awesome. Now that the player has the TBL, they can activate the Gravno crane and ride it out of the factory. Hi, my name is Evan Schwartz and this is my area. We're going to let the scrapper talk for a okay. minute. Okay. I have this TBL thing, which is supposed to protect me from these radioactive clouds. I need to get some experimental fuel cell that they think created these clouds to save the world. And my first task here is to check out a generator. I'm a scrapper, not a frickin' electrician. The generator has to be turned on in order to eject the fuel cell. Money just laying around. Huh. Seems like a waste to leave it here unguarded. So your first order of business is to find the generator and see if it's in good working hey. order. This battery looks like it can recharge the TVL. Nice! The fuel cell will not eject without a failover power source. I'm sure this will come in handy. I wonder what the side effects are. Thank God. Okay, it just needs a fuse. This used to be a power plant or something, right? They gotta have a fuse around here somewhere. So you find out that the generator is in good working order. The circuit breaker's got a busted fuse, so if you can find a fuse and get the circuit breakers back online, you should be in business. Really? Acid? Come on. I got a day later. Just don't splash on my face. Or, uh... Yeah. Okay. Fuse. Check. Now I need to find the circuit breakers and get this thing installed. If it wasn't for the apocalypse, I could be an electrician. <laughs> yeah. That's the ticket. So as you're going through NetApp, you're finding that the traps and obstacles are uh, increasing in difficulty. Well, that wasn't hard. 
What's it say here? Oh. All three control panels must be configured oh. for failover after breaker restart. Okay. If I were a control panel, where would I be? So once you've repaired the circuit breakers, your next objective is to configure all three consoles oh, okay. to fail over to the generator. Let's eject the core, get the fuel cell, and get the hell out of this place. And once that's been done, the fuel Ooh. cell will eject. I haven't seen one of these in a while. I bet I can get a lot for this. <laughs> it's not like you can run to a radio shack for this stuff anymore. Wow. Nice lab. In this room is the reactor core. Man, that's big. I wonder how much radiation is coming off this thing. Ah, oh, crap. Something tells me I've worn out my welcome. I gotta go. Once you have the fuel cell, all of the clouds are going to be attracted to it, so you've got to get out of there quick. Kidding. Who had time to dig this frickin' pit? Working these bridges, and then you're into the next area. <sighs> okay. Hello, my name is James Boyer, and this is the beginning of my area. It starts off in a hallway where you have to I'm jump underneath the crates paid. and move the boxes. Once you get through the hallway and fall into the bottom of the elevator shaft, you realize that the security door is locked. So we need to grab the ammo crate and put it on the pressure plate here to unlock the door. Now we can press E to open the door when we're standing by it. Those trip wires in the, like they'll really give me a bad day. You better not touch In the me. warehouse here, we have the trip wires, which we have to avoid by pressing C to duck under or space bar to jump over. And you can always use T to heal if needed, once you have a med keep pack. There is a journal entry also over in the left hand corner over there. <sighs> here you'll need to jump over and climb underneath the fallen beams that have fallen and the tripwire here. And then I'll complete the objective of getting to the stairway. On the other side of the stairway is the control panel. The security camera. I wonder what combinations of levers will shut it off. And the ladder here will let you get up to the top. That ladder on the floor should help me get up to that walkway. On this side, you'll have to jump down because there's no ladder on that side. Now we can actually see the fan itself, and the combination is on the right side of the wall here. The combination for the levers to shut it off. So to get back, we need to go back through the control panel. Has some collectibles that we can pick up inside the ductwork here. Last week. I realized that the fuel cell itself was creating the mysterious poison clouds outside. Today, I have finally figured out how to fix the fuel cell, but before I could make the necessary modifications... Here you can press 1, 3, and 4 to open the... One of the this turns the levers. ...stolen by my lead technician and taken to the abandoned church nearby. I hid prototypes of the other component inside of the teddy bears in the arcade until the other piece can be retrieved. If the pieces aren't combined with the fuel cell, soon the gas clouds will take over the entire area. Oh no! The gas clouds are coming into the base. I have and to get out of here now. Now that the fan's now. been shut off, we can leave the area. 
We just have a few, couple more trip wires to avoid and some poisonous clouds from the fuel cell. And you can always use the Tesla device to actually cause the clouds to run off out of your way. Then you can duck underneath the barriers here. I need to find that and that leads into the next area. By arcade. Hi, this is Alex Selden, and this is my scene. Uh, I should probably visit the arcade first. I'll have to find another way across. Uh, a lot of the updates between beta and gold for me were... Um, a lot of fine-tuning with regards to both visuals and um, mechanics. Um, additionally, the team has... There's a workbench up there. That may come in The team has there. also put together a lot of uh, work towards getting uh, collisions to give audio feedback to the player uh, so that it's not like you're just tossing around things and they just kind of don't really feel like you're, you're moving them. Uh, so I've got sounds on the water. Looks like I need to use these two pillars to cross the river. Maybe if I keep using the spare one in front of me. Sounds on the pillars, sounds on the piles of leaves. So there's all kinds of sounds being used with regards to, you know, giving feedback to the player. Um, also, another thing that, you know, we, we tried to work a lot on was getting the game to run as smoothly as possible. Um, a lot of that has been done by activating and deactivating certain scenes and objects. I should pull this lever to let down Certain scenes and objects at different times. And it's vastly improved our overall frame rate for our level. Powers out in the arcade, too. I guess I can be an electrician again. Gotta restore the power to get the doors open. I've also tried to put a lot of work into preventing the voice lines from uh, interrupting each other. Uh, so th that's why some of them are a bit shorter this time than they were last time, is just to where the... Looks like someone forgot to put this car in park. Maybe I can push it out of the way to get to that Just to where the player doesn't, you know accidentally trigger two of them at the same time. Um, I also wanted to show the... Better use the grapnel to carry this generator. Uh, I think I saw a fuse box on the side of the arcade. Maybe I can use these pillars to help me get it across the big... Dish. I also wanted to show the, uh, the original intended strategy for getting this, uh, this generator across. Um, the original strategy was a lot more similar to the river, and it still works perfectly fine. Um, I've just found that most players don't seem to quite think about it. it. Is just stand on top of the pillars and slowly move one by one. Um, and the interesting thing about this, and I'll come back to it later, uh, is that when you're going back to the start with the bear, you have an option to do it this way. Now this is just me trying to get it into the, the lip of that thing. The generator needs gas. Looks like I gotta win some tickets before I can get that bear. Uh, now, on top of the, um, you know, all the other changes I've made, I have actually come in and spruced up the, the arcade, gave it some more arcade-sounding sounds for when you win and stuff. Um, like for instance, here, you can hear the, you can hear the pins as the the bowling ball hits them. Um, I've also fixed the duck game to where instead of, you know, having a, a chance for the balls to go through the ducks, uh, they now should hit reliably every single time that you throw them at the ducks. 
Um, assuming, of course, that you aim at them right. Uh, I, I also kind of wanted to show off the fact that there is a anti-cheating thing here to where if you stand up here, it turns off all the pins and all the or the bowling ball, and it does the same thing at the duck game. Whoa, jackpot of teddy bears. Good to know in case I lose one. Uh, another thing that we edited from the last build was actually stating that there were prototypes Gotta in the teddy bears. Teddy bear back across the river. I need to find a way to get it there without getting it wet, though. That'll probably ruin the device. I could use this third pillar in the river to get the bear across. Or maybe I could use some of that precision throwing I learned in the arcade. And this is the part I'm talking about. I wanted to make sure that the player had both means of actually using the things that they've learned in the level. So either they could use the third pillar and do the same setup as the generator, or they could do a setup similar to the arcade. Well, I can't carry the bear through the waterfall. Is there another way to get it out of this cave? So you just toss the bear? Oh, another thing that I I also tried to add was a, uh, a waterfall. Um, and I'm kind of pleased with how that looks compared to the old one. There up ahead on the right where I can get the device out of this teddy bear. Time for some surgery. I need to get the bear up to the workbench on this ledge. Maybe that boulder in the ditch nearby can help. And a, a funny thing um, that I didn't even intend is that I had a cloud over closer to the bridge. And since I wanted to show off the fact that, you know, the character says, oh, I can't go this way, I, I need to find another way around, uh, that cloud kind of followed me over to the trail a little bit. Because we still have the uh, the fuel cell. All right, got half the device. No, but the other church. than that, that's mostly it for all the new stuff in this scene. And I uh, hope you enjoy, Mitch. My name is Mitchell Lang, and this is my area of the church. We'll open with a woody comet from the scrapper here. Turrets, huh? Too bad this TVL thing isn't bulletproof. That'd be too easy. So as you can see, the clouds have also spread to this area. Uh, this is the final area of our collective level. So as the level progresses, you will be noticing that there are um, mechanics from the previous areas that have been implemented. Uh, more so in gold than in beta. I'm going to go ahead and hop up here real fast. I'm going to break this window down. As you can tell, as in the other areas, all physics objects do have a collider sound. Just to add a little bit of a touch right, to the area. I'm in. Now what? So once you're inside the church, the turrets have been, have remained throughout our levels. Um, it, we just felt as though it gave this final area something different. Um, you know, there was a lab technician who put the device here. Some kind of musical lock. Better find the music sheet so I can play the right notes. So with that being said, he was able to set up his own defenses to try and keep anyone from obtaining the other half of this device. <laughs> Okay, our scrapper got the music sheet, unlocked the door. Watch out for the stairs. And we're going to head down to the basement. As you can hear in the gold version, there is a bit of more ambiance. Not sure why the water didn't load in here for the video, however that will be resolved in the EXE build. We're gonna hop over there. There's a nice little tunnel here to get around that cave in. 
So we'll go ahead and move these crates out of the way here. And watch out for these tripwire mines. Get through this little passageway that's been dug out. Okay. So we're going to head down this hallway here and see what's going on down here. Looks like, like I an electrical trap. Until I turn the generator off. Now I just got to find the generator. All right. So now our new objective is we need to find the generator to shut down the electrical trap guarding the Phoenix orb that contains the other half of the device. So well, we can hear it now. You can tell it's behind that door. Okay. Well, we've seen this before. Let's go try and find ourselves the connector. Now you may notice from beta to gold we've decided to get rid of the cross guarding the broken wall here. Uh, the cross was just too big and clunky. It was very difficult to control with the gravnel. So we opted to cover it up with that nice little painting there and we'll go ahead and use these barrels. our connector. We can tell that we're close to the generator once again because you can hear it through that wall there. Go ahead and give this a toss just to make our lives a little easier here. I'm going to head down this hallway. Insert the connector, and the door's open. All right, we're in the generator room. Now how do we shut it off? Maybe I can throw one of those wrenches in that box up there. Hopefully it'll break something. All right, well, there's no switch or anything, so let's just try and break the darn thing. Take aim. Alright, that did it. Now I can go get that orb and get out of here. Now with the generator off, those electrical traps should be disabled. <sighs> go ahead and try and take the easy route here. And that didn't work. <sighs> Let's listen. Electricity's off. We'll go ahead and head in here. However, this room is still powered. You have to watch out for that. Use this crate. Watch out for the uh, turret. Jump across. Grab the orb. Okay, the exit is open. Jump across. No. Okay. Well, thank God for checkpoints, huh? Go ahead and skirt around the laser pointer. Up the ramp we go. And our outro cutscene comes in. And we've saved the world from the clouds. Thank you very much.